In trying to uh, kind of explain or hit the high spots of the evolution of surfboards, surfing started with um, early coastal warm water fishing cultures, you know, and paddling out in a dugout to catch fish to eat. Then eventually at some point they paddled out to catch a wave instead of fish. Then they realized that the boat, they didn't need all that to ride the wave, so they began to diminish the hull until it became a plank in the plant shape of a hull. That surfboard is basically probably in constant refinement and more highly refined once it came to Hawaii. The early surfboards that the Hawaiians used basically fell into two categories. You had the alia, which was you know nine foot or shorter, uh, commoner surfboard, and then they had the olos that could be up to 24 feet in length, and those were royalty. If you weren't royalty and you used it, you could lose your life. Tom Blake, in the late 20s, invented the hollow box board. That was one of the first real innovations was lightening up these 200 pound boards. You had to get it to shore and drain it every once in a while or it would sink on you. The, the planks then had a tendency to do what they call slight ass. When you tried to pull the, the edge of the board too tight against the face of the wave, the tail would slide out. Some of the local guys like Downing started experimenting with kind of chopping a V into the tail, kind of creating a fin-like effect and that started what was called the hot curl movement. Prior to uh, the use of fiberglass, fins had to be shallow disc shapes that weren't too deep. You had a hard time keeping a fin attached. And they tried bolting them and nailing them and putting quarter molding along the edge, but none of that really worked. And fiberglass was introduced at a New York boat show. And after that, you saw fins start to get longer, larger. They could laminate the fin onto the board so that they could have deep fins, and the deep fin allowed radical maneuvering. Simmons, we experimented with multiple fins, you know, twin fins, and this more or less kind of is the inspiration for the modern fish design. Hobie started producing foam, all foam boards in about 57, and it was so much easier to shape foam. You could produce them faster, it was light, it was more maneuverable and then Gidget came out at about the same time, and so it really just all exploded at once. It was really quite different than it is now. It was uh, kind of this magical thing practiced by just a few eccentric people, and now it's a billion dollar industry, and it's kind of overblown, and a lot of the original magic and value is a little bit lost. That's really what the Surfing Heritage Foundation is about, which is saving the history of surfing uh, so that generations in the future can appreciate where it came from.